past 7 o'clock, so we'll get things started. Uh, I apologize for being a minute or two late, but uh, we're going to do this. Second for folks to get seated. I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. Uh, thank you for coming out. Uh, my name is Robert Queen. I'll be the moderator this evening. And uh, we want to thank Landmark Baptist Church for providing space for us uh, to have our meeting and for hosting us. And I think we've got someone that's going to open us with a quick prayer. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for the blessings that you've displayed on us, for the opportunity to get together, to the Lord, give us uh, wisdom and guidance to uh, make the decisions and things that will best serve you and, and uh, our county and our church. Do this in your name, I pray. Amen. Can everyone hear okay? Raise your hand if you can't hear. <laughs> I'm an engineer, so that's about as funny as we get. We're usually pretty dry, so you just have to uh, bear with me. Uh, I will, uh, got a few housekeeping or ground rules to go over just so that everyone is aware and we're on the same page. Um, tonight's meeting is not sponsored or sanctioned by the Glenwood County School Board of Education, any other government agency, any political party group, any business entity or group or any religious organization or group. It's simply a group of Americans exercising their constitutional right to assemble. So that's it. I also feel it, uh, just right, uh, Daniel, could you pop up that letter, please? Several of us, I guess you would say, that have organized or uh, that appear to be in charge of the meeting. Uh, it's basically uh, giving fair notice that we're not supposed to slander or talk bad things about folks. Now, I looked up FERPA, and you folks are here in the room, so I just thought you needed to be aware of what uh, someone has, has claimed. Uh, uh, FERPA is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Basically, that means you can't disclose a student's educational record without permission from the parents or the student if the student's 18 years old. The second part refers to North Carolina General Statute 162A-6.1. This actually covers the privacy of employee personnel records for water and sewer authorities. <laughs> I have no idea what that has to do with tonight's <laughs> meeting. I'm pretty sure we won't be discussing water sewer personnel employee records. Uh, it's interesting that they quoted the wrong general statute. Uh, maybe they have special knowledge of water and sewer regulations. I don't know. Uh, I believe the correct one is uh, Article 21A, Chapters 319 to 321 of North Carolina General Statute 115C. 115C covers everything with uh, local boards of education. Uh, that discuss privacy of employee personnel records. So, with all that said, here's my, I, I did talk to a couple of attorneys this afternoon just to make sure that everything's hunky-dory. And uh, with all of that said, here, here's the disclaimers for tonight's discussion. I am not an attorney. I don't practice one on TV, as they say. Uh, any comments related to the FERPA or the general statutes above should not be construed as legal advice. I'm not giving you legal advice on anything. Uh, if you have questions about those two things, then you should seek your own legal counsel. I'm not acting on behalf of the Cleveland County Schools Board of Education. I simply volunteered to moderate, 
And at some point in this meeting, if you don't like the way I'm doing it, somebody stand up and you can elect another one and I'll, I'll gladly sit down. It, it's not about me, it's not about anyone in particular. You know, we're here for the students and the, and the teachers. Uh, each speaker is responsible for their own comments. The original guidelines that, we, uh, that were published in the Star and other places uh, ask speakers not to mention any students by name. And speakers are also asked not to refer to any Cleveland County Schools employees, teachers, staff, or administration by name. Uh, speakers are responsible for the validity of any comments they make. And since this meeting is not sanctioned by the school board, the board is not obligated or bound to act on anything discussed here. It would be our duty as citizens to attend board meetings and call or email board members to ensure that they act on our concerns. So we need to follow up on what we discussed tonight. And also, uh, one final comment. Uh, any comments tonight do not necessarily represent the views of Landmark Baptist Church. Landmark is not taking a position on anything uh, discussed here tonight. Uh, Landmark is only providing the venue uh, for us to meet. So is that enough? Does anybody have any questions about that? Uh, yes, I don't know. It was a anonymous letter. It was an anonymous letter. Yes, sir. I guess they'll have to sign it when they file the lawsuit. So. <laughs> yes, you have to make your own decision as to what you want to include in your comments. Uh, I'm just saying you have to you have to make your own decision about how you want to represent that. You know, keep it. You know, first of all, we're in a church. This is not a worship service or anything like that, but we also we want to be respected, uh, respectful of where we're at. That's up to you. You can use their name. You can refer to them by principal or teacher or school board member, however, however you feel you need to do that. Because I'm not an attorney, and I'm not going to tell you one way or the other. That's just, I don't think there's going to be any problems. I don't know if the person that wrote the letter is here tonight or if they have uh, lookouts here tonight for them. I don't know. I'm not worried about it. So that's that's just going to be up to each speaker to exercise their own judgment. That's how we speak most of it. Is there any other questions on the disclaimers or any ground rules for tonight? Yes, sir. I was one of the persons, one of the people that the letter was addressed to. I have absolutely no fear of a lawsuit from any anonymous person. The way I looked up the law too, and I don't intend to discuss anything about the water board. And if I did, I would address it to the water board. Uh, this, this, I don't have a child in school right now. So, but if I did, I would have the right to. Uh, I, I believe, in my own mind, if I was a parent of a child in school, that I would mention their name if I wanted to. If there was a special administrator that, that uh, these folks are, they're, they're administrators, they're in the public record. So I personally have no fear of mentioning any, anything about what needs to be mentioned. Any other so that's questions? My, that's my opinion. Any other questions uh, regarding ground rules? Or Okay. Um, tonight's meeting is about Cleveland County Schools. The goal is to discuss ways to make the school system better for students and teachers. We also want to hear if you have a praise report of what's, what are we doing right, what do we need to keep doing, what do we need to expand on, if you have any of those comments. Um, everyone should feel uh, welcome to voice their comments. And like I said before, we're just Cleveland County family getting together to discuss our schools. Uh, don't intend to be Crest or Kings Mountain or Burns or Shelby tonight or, or Cleveland County School. So we want to do what's best for that. Uh, we have asked uh, Ms. Yvette Grant has agreed to uh, take minutes for tonight's meeting and she will uh, generate a report that we'll pass on to the school board. And that will also be made available to anyone that would like to have it. We can email it to you, make it, uh, we'll have to find a website or something we can make it available on. But we'll, we'll make a way for you to get a copy of that report if you'd like.
Uh, my name's Robert Point. Uh, let's see, one more thing. Uh, I did send an invitation to all the school board members, uh, the current superintendent, the new superintendent, the assistant superintendents, and two other district staff. I received a response from six board members indicating that they would not be able to attend for, for various reasons. Uh, there are two board members in attendance that I know of, and the uh, new superintendent and two staff members, they did respond that they were not, would not be able to attend, and then there were three or four others that I didn't hear anything back from. They were invited to come. All right. So to, the reason for tonight is to allow you time to comment uh, regarding uh, Cleveland County Schools, and we had a sign-up sheet at the front, and we'll basically just call folks in order that you signed up. We'll start with a time limit of, of three minutes. Uh, at the end of the three minutes, if you've got two sentences left to read, we'll let you finish your, your two sentences. If you've got two pages left, then we're going to go ahead and let everybody else speak, and then we'll go round two if we still have time and, and everyone's still uh, ready to hear comments. So we'll just go about it that way. Um, if we end up being, if we're here till 10 o'clock with folks speaking, we'll either order out pizza or we'll uh, set a time for another meeting and, and do it again later on. Let's see here. I think we've got everything covered that, <laughs> that we need to cover. So. The first person listed is Greg, is that Pesor? Pesor. Pesor. You're welcome to come to the podium or you can speak from where you're at. Okay. My name is Greg Pesor. I didn't think I'd be here until I seen it in the paper. And I want to address something that happened two years ago. It was a shooting in front of a school. I worked in the school system 33 years. Our number one priority should be safety, and I don't think it is. This shooting occurred in front of an elementary school by an old criminal shooting out a house because of drug money. That criminal came through the school system before he was a criminal, left the school system, went to Gashton County, walked in an office there, and hit a principal over the head with a ball bat. Blood all over the office, he's lucky to be alive. He had to retire. Fourteen years later, he comes back to the city of Kings Mountain, I live outside Kings Mountain. And he's trying to get his money, and he starts shooting at the house. Three different occasions he shot, three different days. On the weekends, one day I'm working on work day. I have no idea what's going on. My daughter comes to me, says her parents moved her child. She's also moved from the neighborhood. And I said, Jennifer, are you sure? And she said, yes. And she said, I told her, call the superintendent immediately. I hope everybody would say the same thing. She calls the superintendent. Secretary puts her to the safety person he, who's not in that role now, who's got another position. He calls my daughter back. He knows my daughter. I know this person real good. I have nothing against him. I really like him. He says, what can we do about it to my daughter? That's the wrong answer. I don't care where she was at, whether it's inside the school, outside, or across the street. You call the police department. He didn't do that. I followed up with the police department. And then my daughter goes to the principal. The principal, my daughter gets the chief to come to the school and the detective. They sat down. The principal said, well, we don't need your help. It's off the school ground. Well, my daughter, before I even realized, was homeschooled. I really got upset then. She didn't have any confidence in administration or the school board. I'm going to tell you about school board in just a second. But she starts homeschooling. I go to talk to the police chief, look at the file, and realize who that person was. And then I realized my daughter, she made the correct decision. There's no way I'd want my grandchildren in that school. And he didn't come back shooting again. But they found him on the side of the road four months later to kill. You know, the drugs, it got him. But he could have come back. 
There's people like that all over this country, and we need to take it serious. Ten months later, Cleveland County took it serious, but it was a thousand miles away. They react to problems, they're not proactive. And we all need to be proactive, even going into Walmart. We need to be proactive at the school, especially. Nobody in the school system would have got a promotion if this guy would have came back and that bullet would have went across that road on the playground and somebody would have got killed. Somebody would have had some answers. Well, I decided I was going to approach almost. I decided I was going to approach every school board member during the election, and I did. Five, four of them. And I went to every one, four of them. None of them followed up. Not a one of them, but the first. So then I got upset. Then one of the board members came into a store. He's here tonight. He said, well, I don't think it even happened. And that really got me concerned. Then I started making some phone calls. And you talk about getting run around. I got to run around from everybody. They didn't want to meet with me. They want to meet me with the superintendent. Well, I don't mind meeting with the superintendent, but they got to be in charge of whoever's superintendent. That's their role. And they didn't want to talk to him about it. I got, you know, if I meet with them, then I'll meet with the superintendent and give them some ideas. That's my problem, and it's with safety, and I hope everybody in this room feels the same way. Our kids are number one. And they should be protected at school. I don't care how many, how much money is stolen. I don't care how many people. We should protect our kids at all times. As soon as the school board says, I'll sit down with me, I'll sit down with them, and then I'll go to the superintendent, just like the certified letter I got last week from the superintendent of the school want me to meet with him. I will meet with him. But I want to make sure Danny, Mr. Harris, they're all on the same page with our safety of our kids. I wrote every one of them, none of them responded. One school board member said she couldn't even be in the room with another school board member. When that happened, we got a problem in this town. Sheriff's Department does have a school safety task force committee that has been working for the past year and uh, should be expecting a report from that committee soon. I know they have some, uh, a survey online. I do not know the exact address for it, where you can go take a survey if you're a parent or if you're in the school system, you can uh, take that survey on school safety. Uh, our next speaker is Matt Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you tonight. Uh, thank you, Mr. Queen, for moderating this forum. Uh, I also want to thank Landmark Baptist Church for having us. I'm a member of the school system and working in Cleveland County Schools for 13 years. And tonight I want to offer a praise report for what we call CTE. It's an acronym that stands for Career Technical Education. And uh, I know we've got some big supporters on the school board here tonight that have promoted Career Technical Education because they believe in all students in the Cleveland County school system. Uh, not the ones that are just most fortunate or the most disadvantaged. We educate all students and offer a, a place for them to, to grow, thrive, and become successful. Uh, I'm an agriculture teacher at Crest High School. A few years ago, a member of the community said, agriculture education is a dying art. That person failed to realize that we still consume a meal three times a day. And we help, in my department, educate folks about helping to uh, feed, clothe, and fuel this planet. Ag agriculture education is alive and well, and supported along with automotives, welding, health occupation, and a number of other areas of career technical education. And the school system has supported those areas because it supports students. And it grows our workforce, both in Cleveland County, across the state of North Carolina and the world. My praise report tonight gets to uh, Last week, I was attending the state FFA convention. Now, FFA stands, or formally stands, for Future Farmers of America. Uh, but as we feed, clothe, and fuel the world today, FFA has evolved. 
And last week, the Crest FFA chapter, which I have the opportunity to work with some fine young men and women, uh, they were recognized as the top chapter in the state of North Carolina. That's because of the support of our school board. That's because of the support of the teachers in the classroom. That's because of the support of you folks in the community that are here tonight to look, to try to find ways to help us solve some of the problems and the issues that we have, but also further the education of these young people. I hope that tonight, as I close, Mr. Moderator, I hope that tonight does not continue to polarize us, that makes us mad at each other, that gets us upset. I hope tonight offers a forum where we can better work together, where we cannot get mad at somebody else because of their beliefs, but we can get together and talk about some of the issues, talk about the good things, the FFA chapter that was recognized last week, but also talk about some of the issues that Mr. Peshaw brought up that we need to, to work on. Uh, and as we do that, we don't benefit, but our students do. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And our next speaker is Lori Wilson.
my children's schools to just a letter of appreciation. So I'm going to leave these up here for anybody. Next speaker is Anna Lando. abandoning public education. I did not foresee charter schools moving in and taking public money away and neither being able to service children in the community with special needs or lack of transportation, nor be held accountable by an elected school board. I did not foresee our public leaders in Raleigh gambling on the lottery to pay for teacher raises or other necessities that should always be part of the budget. My focus since my daughter started kindergarten at Graham Elementary in 2002 has been on all the children in my community, not just the ones that live in my house. I spent seven years as a volunteer and PTO board member, including several years as PTO president at Graham and Marion Elementary School. Dr. Hopper recently asked me how many years I had in towards retirement. And I told her, you're mistaken. I am free. I'm a volunteer. Um, to see a school system, or to see a system that I and so many others have spent so many years of our lives aiding, promoting, and raising funds for will be devalued and, and abandoned by our state leaders is tragic. My concerns today are whether our children will be prepared for the future by having highly qualified teachers who will remain in our school systems and not take jobs that will pay a higher living wage. <coughs> I know my children and many others will be okay because they have resources outside of the school system to aid in their education. But I don't know about all their friends and peers. I don't know if they'll be able to get individual attention uh, or help during the school day because the state budget does not allow for teacher assistance. I don't know that many children will be home in time for dinner because fewer teacher assistants also means fewer bus drivers. And that means second and third and maybe fourth loads taking children home from school and to school. I don't know if the children will have books to take home to do their homework. The two best indicators that a school will be successful is parent participation and smaller classroom sizes. Our current legislature wants to increase class sizes and take away classroom resources. Teaching is not a corporate ladder type of job. A teacher cannot get promoted or earn a raise or other bonuses except through years of service, gaining more education, or going into administration. Tenure is earned, and it does not mean that a bad teacher can't be fired. It just means that due process has to be served. No one wants to be demoted to get a raise, and that's what taking tenure away would do. People think teachers have two months of vacation in the summer, but they are 10-month employees, and they are not paid during those two months that they are not there. They are laid off but can't claim them. Um, no, um, let's see. Our, our legislature has taken away such incentives as the Teaching Fellows Program, which ensures that some of the best and brightest students go into teaching for at least five years. My own daughter wanted to be a teacher until this year. She's now rethinking her whole entire college plan. As for Cleveland County Schools, thank you. My children are doing very well. Two are in orchestra, Mr. Champion's here. My daughter got to sit on Carnegie Hall stage last year in New York City. New York City. That was very exciting. All three of them are involved in theater and um, summer theater for the children. All three scored very high on their EOGs, EOCs, and SAT. They received top-notch educations. Um, and I can't help but I see two of the teacher assistants here tonight. 
My oldest daughter, her third grade teacher assistant, Susan Mabry, was very important. They wrote to each other in their journals. And, um, and then my youngest daughter's third grade teacher assistant, Miss Laney, is here tonight, too. Both of them, I cannot imagine, they did, were not there. We don't have third grade teacher assistants. I can't even imagine that. I mean, they're a huge part of their education. Um, I'm pretty close. <laughs> Um, also, I've, um, I'm, I, I want to say kudos to, the, uh, to our school board members. I've emailed them twice in the past year, and both times I've had at least half of them uh, res respond to me. And I even had a follow-up from Dr. Hamrick recently to make sure that the person who contacted me about a question I had got in touch with me. So I have had success when I've tried to get in contact with our, with our school board. Um, I want to say that my daughter was heavily recruited to go to Gaston Day in sixth grade after she took SAT for the Duke Tips program. And I thought, well, I don't really want to send my daughter to a school when she can make the SAT higher than a normal high school senior in sixth grade with the education she gets here in the 